let me repeat this for you. Evil people get rich for the moment. Do you think that's really worth it? To receive all of that money in an unjust way, like an unchristian way, no, just that, for this <laughs> lifestyle? Or just for this that's lifetime? Why, that's why I don't want to, like... That's why I know I shouldn't answer that. I'd not be this fat if I was shooting of up. I'd be shredded. Of course. Ah, bro. Of course. <laughs> all right, anyway. Stop playing with me, bro. <laughs> You're just jealous fighting for you're your life body. you're fighting for your life <laughs> no i'm not shooting up i promise I'm not. <laughs> no i would never do that so you you never know you never know like you know let's say some random guy cries one time he loses his wife of 20 years you know do you want to <laughs> take the risk <laughs> <laughs> 20 years dude all dream. reality people don't care about your emotions facts so men get paid more than women on average However, for the same job, they're gonna get paid the same amount, but just for the same women, time worked as well. Like, like yeah, for the same time. Just women go for less dangerous jobs and less. Uh, what is it called? Less less labor income. intensive. Yeah, labor. Not even that. Like, there's less income for the jobs they go into. Yeah, compared to men. Yeah, as soon like as the you engineering said, field. As as soon as you said, uh, women go into uh, less paying jobs. Uh, there was this meme um, uh -huh. that came up: woman, uh, woman doctors, female, female, <laughs> female engineers, female nurses. Yeah, like that's their choice. Then. Why did they go into female <laughs> careers? You know. Hello, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Vorapod. Today, we'll be talking about masculinity and feminism something that's regular Tate was masculinity talking about. it's toxic masculinity there's no such a thing all right so <laughs> tate was talking about it and now he's uh he's locked away aiden is got talking caught about by the it. matrix he was caught by the matrix he saw yeah. what was going on i saw actually a video of of him saying something really weird it was something disgusting but it just sounds so Tate? fake online yeah vice put it up um they put it on their website and it was like a it was it was the most fakest voice you could like imagine that didn't even sound like him what did they say oh okay no he, he was just it was like disgusting like I, i'm not gonna review what he said but it, it was like the most fakest voice ever well yeah vice it was, it was recent yeah. or like in the past couple of years once they got bought out by some other company vice has been saying like a bunch of skewed information and trying to like cancel people that go against their well, agenda so. or whatever so yeah, yeah you can't really was... trust them as a liable news source anymore if they ever even were a news source they kind of just did documentaries before they just say whatever they want to say yeah it's, it's a new i mean it's like an organization it's like pretty much what we do like we talk about our opinions and they do the same thing so you can't like take their word for it and plus when they came over to his house to do that documentary, they were literally out to get him. Like they wanted to find some flaws in his like business or his strategies and try to like throw him under the bus. Like that's yeah. what they're there to do. Yeah. But yeah, before well, we get in, are you have more just stuff? before we say anything? I don't really care about Andrew Tate, right? He's yeah. pushing for uh, he's pushing for men to be more men, and I'm okay with that. But I don't really if he's doing men to be bad, manly. I don't really care. Masculine. Yeah. Uh, that's not my business. Some so. of his stuff is whack, obviously. but Yeah. The part where uh, he kind of like brings the, like religion up and then down. It's like it's like it's not very consistent with him. You can yeah. Say. He's very like inconsistent. He uses it to his advantage, I feel exactly, like. Exactly. Exactly. He doesn't. To get in an yeah. audience. Because yeah. like, yeah, it's messed up. Yeah. But the way you should actually use religion is how we do it. So we're going to be reading from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17 and 19. Your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. Evil people get rich for the moment, but the reward of the godly will last. Godly people find life, e evil people find death. And that kind of ties back to how uh, you can say like Andrew Tate lives his life as well, you know? Because yeah. he's gaining his money off of evil ways, and that's how he came up was with his cam girl business. Like, 
let's start off with that. Like, how do you, do you think making money off of like, I guess you can consider that to be like pornography or like cam girls, whatever, or like gambling drugs or like cheating people out of money when you're doing like real estate even like, obviously that's not a good thing, right? Yeah, that's not a good thing. It's, it's like, it's immoral the first time you even think about it. Like, Mm -hmm. right. The first time you think about it, it's like, Oh, make money off of, it's like, dude, do I really want to be that kind of person? You have to think twice, you know, before answering it. And that just leads you like, like, it's automatically like should be like a spark in your head that's probably not a good idea right and it's probably that thought or idea comes into your head when you first do it but then after you receive that first paycheck or like experience the rewards that come after it like you're locked in like you can't get out of it and it's like kind of traps you in there and you get further and further and you're kind of like lost at that point yeah, that's what casinos like the money are made takes over. Yeah. That's how they're huh? made. That's how casino casinos are made because you mm-hmm. get in there, you know, you're like, oh, I'll just put ten bucks on there, you know, whatever. You put ten bucks, another ten bucks, another ten bucks, it adds up, and uh, you, at one too. point, your house is gone. You lost your house. <laughs> yeah, but like, even being the person starting the the casino, like, do you think that's wrong? Like, creating a casino and profiting off of people? Because I know we've discussed it in the past like starting casinos like once we get yeah, big like yeah. i don't know if we were serious about it or just messing around but like your personal thoughts like would you ever do that and do you think that's wrong i honestly can't answer that honestly like, i can't answer that mixed, like at all you have mixed I, feelings about it i have mixed feelings I, I think it's just like the just the the opportunity of money is just massive it kind of like like kind of covers my thoughts yeah, you know, a little bit. So I don't want to answer that because I know that it's covered with like thoughts of money. So let me repeat this for you. Evil people get rich for the moment. Do you think that's really worth it to receive all of that money in an unjust way, like an unchristian way no, just that, for this <laughs> lifestyle or just for this that's lifetime? Why, that's why I don't want to like. That's why I know I shouldn't answer that because, uh, you know, every, everybody is affected by money, you know, it's like, it'd be nice to have money, but, and that's a really easy way of making money by having other people locked, locked in, you know, just handing you money at one point, you know, but I think, yeah, probably not going to happen to be honest. It's not, yeah, it's not right to profit off of other people's mistakes or other people's like sins. Or like even cheating people out of money because I don't know. It's like make a good product or actually provide a service for people. You'll make a profit or a reward off of that. But like don't try to scam them or like cheat them out of like a more like a more larger profit. Like I feel like that's where it gets kind of messed up. Like, okay. If, if you say it like that, what do you think about someone charging more just because their services are, you know, like unique or... Or no, they're rare in a certain area. Let's say this guy um, can charge normally in a city, right? It's you charge, let's say three thousand dollars for a service, you know, some sort of construction thing. But since you live somewhere where it's like rare, like it's hard to find. But it's still a big city, but it's just harder to find. So you charge six thousand. Do you think that's cheating mm-hmm. people out of money? I don't think so, because at that point you're providing your service and having upfront price to it. And people have the choice to say yes or no to it. But I think when it gets wrong is if you provide the service and provide the amount upfront, and then later on you add like extra like fees or whatever. And then you start like saying, oh, I I worked longer over here like this time. So I'm gonna add more money to this. And like you have to pay me extra. Like that's when you're cheating people out of money. Or trying to like- How do casinos do that? Or you're casinos? saying cause casinos kind of prey on people's people's. Well, so. yeah, because yeah. first of all, gambling is a sin. Like it says that in the Bible, it's not to gamble. Okay. So that's right away. That's obviously um, profiting off of other people's sinful nature. That's like you can relate it in a sense to like doing OnlyFans. Like you're providing a service to people, but they're sinning watching you you know Mm -hmm. obviously it's really different but in god's eyes a sin is a sin so you can kind of relate that to each other oh yeah 
And uh, and all sin is equal, right? Mm hmm. So that makes so, sense. So yeah. I think there's obviously a bunch of ways to make money in this world, but I don't know, just like you gotta make sure you're doing it right because at the end of the day, it's not worth it to um, just like live a lavish lifestyle on earth just for a hundred years and then perish in, the, in hell for eternity afterwards. I think that's like not worth it. It just, it's hard because you have to have like faith that that's all real afterwards. And that's what you gotta like always remember. Say yeah, like, and it, I'm pretty sure there's more ways to make money immorally than there is to make it morally. You there's, think so? Well, like like starting businesses or more what? Opportun- I guess more opportunity, more more like it's easier to do. Yeah, you know, you're able you know to make I mean? more when you do it incorrectly. And faster, or, yes, and yeah. faster. Like you, you like is it cheating the system? Yeah, you're, cheating the system. It's it's easier, and. That's what gets people a lot of the times because it's easier. It uh, it'll it'll get you places faster, I guess. But then the day will also catch up to you if you're doing something that's like breaking the law, like yeah. usually like not paying taxes. The IRS will eventually find you. You know, like you can't get away from them. So yeah. Uh, I mean, people get away. People literally yeah, uh, have shirts that say. I what's it called? I evade taxes, or stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's not that difficult if I'm, if I'm being honest. You think that they're being serious if they have that shirt? <laughs> I mean, let's find out. What if I get a shirt and I wear? It? I'm gonna see how fast, how long does it take them to get me? Bro, you don't work. They know, they know better. <laughs> 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 I just messing, but. Uh... After this conversation, what do you think? You still want to start a casino? Is there any? Well, I did, uh, there was obvious that I wasn't going to start a casino. Come on. Okay. You know, a strip club, you know, that's a different story. That's even worse. <laughs> Cause I'm, that's kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Frowned I'm upon kidding. in I'm society, kidding. even. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right. But speaking on gambling, did you see how Bitcoin recently shot up, like today? Did it? Yeah, well, like it went up a good amount. It's at like twenty one, twenty two thousand now, per sure. coin. Yeah, it's yeah, twenty one like, almost. Twenty one thousand right now. Almost, almost. Check uh, if there's what what caused it to go up. Uh, like, is there some type of news? Um, because, like, my brother called me, um, like two or three hours ago, and he's like, "Dude, what happened to Bitcoin? I'm making so much money right now. Like, I only put in one point five thousand and i gained like a couple hundred off of it and that's yeah. kind of surprising yeah because really? yeah most of my um, investments always made me like go in the hole so but like this is like one of the first times i'm actually making good money yeah. and I'm pretty happy about it hopefully it goes down more so i can put more money in but yeah oh, shoot. did xrp so go up did, yeah it went up almost four percent as well yeah everything went up like on average, ten percent today. It was crazy. No, it was four percent. No, I meant like everything, like all coins, like Solano shot up. Oh, yeah. I wonder if Solano, like something happened in the NFT market for Solano to shoot up. Mm, no, I think it all. It's just some Solano. like something had to hype it up, right? I mean, not necessarily. It's just the movement. Just randomly if shoots Bitcoin up. If goes up, uh, market follows. Normally, that's what happens. Well, the thing is, it's it goes up off of hype. It's like there's it doesn't just randomly shoot no, up, right? No, no, it does. When Bitcoin wasn't big, like it was, there was not really hype. So, um, it's more NFT market is more hype, and like the smaller coins are more hype, like small coins. But Solano, crypto is it's a Solano is a big crypto. It's not. It's not yeah. small. It's. Well, it was started because of it's, NFTs, or it got popular off of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were they used NFTs. Yeah, I think it just followed Bitcoin. Yeah. At 120% in two weeks. That's pretty good. Yeah. Are you on the coindesk.com no. thing right now? No. Because you literally just read exactly what I read right there. 
Oh, oh, there's there's a top story on CoinDesk. Yeah. I have. Okay, yeah, it's on there. Yeah, I don't know why I shut up, but it's like, it's I'm, just I'm the move of the it. market. Yeah. Um. That's the. It's good, I guess. XRP went a little bit up. I'm uh, really hurting. My pockets are hurting from uh, <laughs> this downtrend of uh, all these crypto coins going down. Yeah. I need them to go back up. I bet up. you are. Yeah. <laughs> you poor thing. My, oh, poor thing. Poor me. Anyways. So you got a story, right, to tell? I have a story. Well, uh, sort of a story, I guess. Well, uh... I got a tub that we had. We had an extra tub in the garage because we were building houses and we were planning on building houses and then it just didn't work out. So we had an extra tub in the garage, two actually, but we took one to the porch and no, wait, porch. I don't know if that's considered a porch, but it's in the back. The balcony in the back, whatever. whatever. Uh, so we filled, I filled it up with water and now I have an ice bath. So Mm -hmm. the first time I did it today, it was, it was pretty cool. We might show a video right now. Show it, pull that up on your thing. Or do you not have it on your computer? I have, I have, I have it. Yeah, do like a screen share. We'll watch it. Yeah, yeah, do it. But yeah, you finally hopped onto the bandwagon. I started around like, I think three weeks ago now and there's actually a lot of improvements I've noticed, right, like you're gonna, physical improvements. You're gonna have to stop talking. You got it, yeah. A little bit. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, here it starts right now. Uh, for fun. Yeah. And why'd you get sick? Uh, nah, it's pretty safe. No, I don't know. Because I'm talking around the video. That's why. I kind of know. See where we see where like the little thing coming off over there? That's mm-hmm. water is like pouring out right now, and so it's uh, it's kind of draining. Oh, it kind of no goes idea. down a little bit, but how was it? It's freezing. Yeah, it was. It's cold it than, goes on it's cold, colder than anything you've ever felt. Uh, three minutes. Right here, there's the degrees. It's 25 outside that point so anyways i was done by the way i'm standing on ice everything's frozen and it's yeah i still got ice on it's frozen on the deck so yeah good to talk yeah i mean yeah that you need i don't know if you're able to get it somehow bigger because it's good to get like your well, I don't know. You have to get like your chest. I, in there I have as well. the I, the other one is actually bigger. I just thought it this is. one would be like, it just looked like perfect shape. It was like you know, yeah. it, it looks nice. The other one looks like a tub. It it goes sort of like down. It goes like shh, and it goes back up. But it's bigger. It's obviously bigger. It's much bigger. Mm-hmm. Who was uh, uh, filming you? Or, like pulled the phone up. Uh, it Anna? was it was Emma. Emma. Oh, she lives. Yeah. Emma. She yeah. lives there now. She lives here in my house with Yana. Since when? A couple weeks ago. She lived with Lisa before, but she... Why did she move? Or whenever. Never mind. I yeah, probably shouldn't talk about that. Um, but, yeah. So you said it was fine? Feel good? It was, it was good. I mean, I... Did it, like, like, wake you up afterwards? Woke me. I couldn't feel my body, bro. I couldn't feel it's anything. It's crazy. Yeah, it was... It, it was, it was it's bad. definitely, like, quite an experience. And... Yeah. As I was saying, like, I've noticed so much, like, improvements already from, like, three weeks. Like, I had pretty bad, like, acne rashes on my shoulders and stuff and on my chest. And now it's pretty much, like, cleared up. Like, there's still a yeah. little bit. Like, you'll feel, like, rub your hands. But it feels so much smoother. And it's, like, a silk, a silky type of feeling to it. But I wonder why you have rashy, uh, what's it called? Because I'm, bruh. I have so much testosterone shooting through oh, my body. Oh, right really? Now. Is it? Is it? Maybe you're shooting something else through your body. Nah, it's, you that sure happens. About that? that happens, bro. It's part of puberty, you know. I I sweat mm. a lot at the gym, and I'm just like, a, I got you. I run warm as a, like naturally as a person, so that's gonna make me sweat more. And then also, mm. I have hair growing in, so it's ingrown hairs. Plus, it's just I have 
I'm guessing I have more testosterone than a natural person since I've grown like quickly. I'm definitely not shooting up. Like I would not of be course. this. I would not be this fat if I was shooting of up. I'd be shredded. Course. Ah, bro. of course. All right. Anyway, stop playing with me, bro. <laughs> You're just jealous fighting for you're your life you're fighting for your life <laughs> no i'm not shooting up i promise not. <laughs> no i would never do that <laughs> yeah you got a couple of stories to tell as well i see i do yeah. well re- like this week i started my new semester in college and i have a computer science class and we did yep. um in that class we're learning the java language and you said something about how it's not popular anymore. And I remember a teacher yeah. said something as well, how it's like companies don't use it as much, but it's that language is able to like, tra- not translate, but if you learn that Java, you're able to like more easily learn the other um, tech lang- languages or whatever you would consider yeah, them. That That's what I heard as well. Yeah. So I think that's why they're teaching us at computer science. Anyways, what I was going with it is, um, bro, I'm completely lost in that class. Every single kid is like a nerd, and in high school they, oh yeah, like I made video games for fun, and like I did this coding, so this class is easy for me. And I'm the only one in there that has no like computer or coding experience, and I'm just, I'm lost. I'm like trying to think like the whole entire time and I'm always like the last one out of class like trying to finish my projects but um this was yesterday so the, our project we had to do some type of like pix pixel art I don't remember what it's called but you make pretty much an art piece with java and like you just use the keys like to make some type of art and I made like a building I literally just did like a box with a bunch of like lines to make windows and it took me like 50 minutes to do that it was crazy <laughs> I just couldn't get it done like yeah. the first time I compiled my code I had eight errors in it like right away like the first time I was like oh shoot oh my <laughs> that's the start. worst feeling when you when yeah. you pull up and you have and you have <laughs> syntax errors oh yeah. wow, those are the worst it sucks like, so bad after we finished it like we go around in our table and check out other people's artwork there was someone that made like a cool pyramid and like it looked pretty complex someone made a race car and i'm out here with just one simple building <laughs> it was, i mean i'm yeah. learning i'm proud yeah, of myself for at time. least doing that it takes a lot of time to practice yeah and i i did we did like basic games in um in 10th grade i believe 10th grade for me it was dude looking back i went to a school that offered like um computer classes and stuff like that so we kind of yeah. had these classes we built robots stuff like that like we had engineering classes sick. they taught that it was so much fun it was like the best thing i love this so much but it's it's like when once it gets further engineering classes are all mathematical and then mm-hmm. and then like you know um, like math math it just i love i liked math in school but i hate it online doing by yourself doing right, by yourself it's terrible is the worst thing ever that's why if i'm if i'm taking a class i'd rather take it in person for math so yeah, math I, I changed my career in person yeah i changed my career path so now i don't need any math so I'm chilling but yeah uh that's maybe sick. maybe i'll go back i i don't know i haven't decided my, i was thinking about yeah, going electrical back. engineering is pretty much all math like all my classes right now have math and then physics which is math incorporated i'm in like differentiated equations i don't even know what that is but some type of like matrices math yeah and then uh computer science and that's pretty much all my classes so it's a busy yeah. schedule definitely have to like focus at home a lot and like learn on my own because the teacher can do so much like it's hard to listen there for like two hours at a time, but oh, your classes are two hours long. Some of them, yeah. Some are three, yeah. like the lab classes. Really, that's insanely mm-hmm. long. I yeah. Wait, is it once a week though? So the three-hour class is once a week, and then my math class is an hour and fifteen, and that's three times a week. And same with physics, and then my. 
computer science class is two hours a day okay. and that's two times a week so yeah a day okay so i mean that's still it's, pretty stacked that that's that's it's still stacked, stacked but it's way less uh than high school well of like course, I, yeah. I have so much more time like freedom and time on my hands to do other things you didn't think about taking more classes or this it's is like 17 perfect. credits oh okay that's that's a lot yeah there so this is perfect classes. for you mm -hmm. i think, I think like five like, six yeah. classes is pretty good so okay yeah that's pretty good um what was i gonna say i was gonna say something about college anyways anyways engineering math that's actually very fun I wish I, I, wish I, I would math. go to school, to be honest. I'm hoping I make it into the soccer team so I could go back to university in person. <laughs> <laughs> I am so bored. When are you trying school. out again? Uh, it's this summer, but I'm hopefully going to try to like get uh, their attention a little earlier on so I can like, be sure. So and I, uh, if you get in, you'll, you'll be starting at the freshman level or yeah i think so i don't that's the thing i don't know if uh junior colleges work for like count for university yeah. as a, a year so if i if they don't then i'd be on my first semester in this school i think that i'm do. in right now if you translate your or you transfer your credit what they'll count it no but i'm saying i'm okay with the university i'm right now because that's only half a semester yeah. And I'm not going to transfer anything because I can't. It's going to yeah, be useless in reality. You'll uh, see. So I, do, I would just have to transfer completely. And the thing is, I would probably still just be going to this university, doing my classes, and just, just going to that university for just a couple of classes just so I could play on the soccer, soccer. team. I don't really care about getting a degree, to be honest, from the MSU. But, yeah, so... I just want to play soccer. I just want to play some soccer. <laughs> I, actually have a, for you. I actually have two games tomorrow as well. Back to back or what? Back to back. Uh, 11 the and then team? 1. Yeah, for the same team. They're at 11 and then 1. and So it's like an hour long. So we have like one hour break. But it's fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's fun. But it's indoor. It's a little different. It's It feels like you're stuffed. Like... Like there's not enough air, ox. There's not enough oxygen to breathe once you're running inside. It sucks so bad, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I made honey candy today. You know what I that is? I think you. I think you sent me a. I picture. sent you a snap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was making a YouTube video with it, but pretty much how you make it is you just get honey, pour it into a pot, and cook it up to around like two and hundred and eighty degrees Fahrenheit. How did you and track the temperature? I have a candy thermometer for it. Candy thermometer? It, yeah, because regular thermometers, that's way too high. Like heat, it like breaks. So you have to have a candy thermometer. A, is this specifically called internet. a candy thermometer? Yeah, I don't think that's what they're called. But there might be like a, depending on what brand it is, it might have a different name. Do you think like, but, you know, like the metal that goes into the meat, is that going to work? I don't th like I don't think so. It my no. my brother told me to not use that. It's one an electric one good. though. It's an electric one. It's not a, like a Yeah, I one. I have the same one. Yeah. I don't know. You can test it, but I just like I got a special one. It's like a glass thermometer. But anyways, you just cook it up to like, 280 degrees Fahrenheit for like a taffy type of um candy and after that you put it into a pan with like butter on there. Let it cool for a bit and you start like stretching it like regular taffy. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. You just like put butter on your hands and stretch it like that. And it tasted pretty good. It just like tastes like obviously honey with butter, but it's like a different type of feeling to it. It's like a, a taffy type of feeling. It was pretty good. Did you, try it so out. So the only thing in there was, was honey and butter? Honey and butter. Wow. So that it just, it turns to that kind of taffy. Yeah. I don't know how oh. there's some probably science behind it, but yeah, if That's you cook cool. it up to a certain temperature, like if you go over 280 degrees, you can make hard, hard candy. How would that, like... Um, what's I'm not sure. Like, I like on the, even the candy thermometer, it says, like, if you want... I don't know the specific names, but if you want, like, a hard candy, it's at, like, 300-something degrees. And then if you want, like, I don't know, they have, like, settings to it. 
but I guess if you like heat up sugar to certain temperatures and it cools down, it like has different properties or different, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'll have to try it out. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it's a fun little experiment. You can try it out with the the kids. The kids? No. Yeah, have them stretch it around. They're gonna make a mess. Oh, maybe they're gonna make an absolute mess, dude. They mm-hmm. do not understand yet, so no. they're too young. So is that it for the intro? I think that's it for the intro. Okay. And uh, move on to this very interesting topic. Start off with toxic masculinity. Toxic. When you hear that hear that term, what comes to mind like right away? Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate? I'm well, not like, just, okay, what ki- like, what type of characteristics? Okay. Um I don't have I've never actually thought about that. Like it, like characteristic wise. Right. Like, I don't and I don't a lot know. of a lot of people probably don't know like the true definition to it. It's like that word's thrown around so much. Okay. In reality, what I think toxic masculinity is is the lack of masculinity. Elaborate lack of masculinity is toxic if you're a man and you have no masculinity that's toxic (laughs) tread lightly my man (laughs) Uh, you're being pretty bold right there (laughs) anyways the true definition for toxic masculinity is a man that is physically abusive or aggressive hates women like completely hates them and is hyper independent and uh and yeah, it's hyper independent. And obviously, all of those things are bad. And if someone like yeah. has them, definitely should fix it. Like you should. I a hundred percent agree. You agree? I a hundred percent agree. That's not. That's not like. That's not correct. That's not right. And after hearing those, like, those are like the three main or like the basic explanations for toxic mas- masculinity. But like after hearing them. Does that like describe what the media perceives it as right now? No. It's yeah, it's gone skewed so bad lately. Like yeah. people call so Andrew Tate, he's yeah. the figurehead for toxic masculinity right now. He well, <laughs> right now he kind of is uh experiencing Ahead, some currently yeah, something with being physically aggressive or abusive. It's about to, to be people. on the chopping block <laughs> by the matrix just Okay, so if that if that is true that he like did abuse women or whatever or held them against their will, then in that case he is toxic, <laughs> a toxic masculine person. But I don't. He obviously doesn't hate women and yeah, hyper I mean, independent. He's not at all since he has like a whole entire team that he ro- yeah. got up to, to the top. His with. brother, his yeah, brother, mainly had, his brother, mainly his brother. They're like the closest, but then there's. Obviously, a couple like in his other like his, his circle wise, he has like in a circle. But anyways, I just don't like it. Just doesn't fit him necessarily because I don't know. It, uh, maybe it fits him with the current like definition of toxic masculinity. Like one of the things that people view is being the dominant party in a relationship and like setting rules for your partnership. Like as That's a man, toxic. Yeah, that's considered to be toxic. You're not supposed to be like super dominant and you're not supposed to be like telling your woman what to do. Because she has a opinion for herself, which, okay, you're not going to obviously control your Who, like, significant which, other. Which significant other would stay if she wouldn't like agree with it? I, I don't. Right. Like if she doesn't agree with what's going on in the relationship, like she would leave. Like I'm not going to be forcefully like keeping somebody that doesn't want to be there that's that's weird not even that like she okay the woman's gonna use you for whatever you have like maybe if you have money or she like sometimes wants you but then is not gonna listen to you and is gonna go out and like hang around places where you don't want her to be and like you ask her and that's in some cases people like perceive that as being toxic because you're not trusting her or whatever I think that you ask once, she keeps doing it, you leave. That's I think it. it's that easy. Huh? I, I, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. 
Well, it depends what type easy, of relationship. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Because uh, you don't want to be put in a situation where you're like dishonoring yourself, basically. Mm-hmm. That's like not who you want to be with. That's, that's just, that's just, it is what it is. You just find someone that you want to be with that, you know, checks all your boxes. That's it. Right. So, yeah, I, it, toxic masculinity definitely needs to be fixed, but I just don't see it much. Like, like so, it, they think that it's a bigger problem than it really is, but they make it a problem by changing the definition of it. Mm-hmm. So now they change the definition, and now any sort of masculinity, I think, they see it as toxic masculinity. Right, and that's definitely a problem because that's making our society less, like, it's pretty much making everyone be the same in a way, you know, yeah. and like less aggressive. And that's what the elites want or the government. They want everyone to comply. And when you have masculine people, they usually go on their own and they stand up against things that are like unjust or that are against them. So that's like why that's being probably pushed so hard right now. And like traditionalism, how do you feel about a traditional family where like the man is the breadwinner, works all day, and then the woman's at home doing whatever, like taking care of the children, cleaning, and just like doing Honestly, the at-home duties? That's that's perfect. Like in my eyes, that's good. I don't. Yeah. I, it's like I'm not against my wife working for, at the beginning before, let's say she has kids if she wants to, but she doesn't have mm-hmm. to, right? But see, ever since I was like a child like I, I always saw as like i'm gonna be making all the money because i wanna you know and that's the type of culture we grew up in yeah and that is the, the eastern side of the world like that's where we're from the eastern europe and stuff that's more traditionalist type of view and since we're like the first generation americans we kind of got grown up in that type of lifestyle so that's how we were taught and in all reality don't you think a woman wouldn't mind not working and staying at home with the children yeah but you see that argument when 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 people say that argument they argue as is like well that's taking away her strength like like you're kind of what is it called like taking away her potency maybe like like dumbing her down basically Uh uh-huh i I understand you understand yeah um definitely so if if a woman wants to work i guess she can do it but like i just feel like if you have children, at least one of the parents should definitely stay home. So, like, they experience, like, the children can, like, be raised by a parent. Because when you're raised by, like, someone else, it's not the same. And the children, like, start acting out or trying to, like, do stuff for attention from the parents. Like, that's how nature works. Like, you have not to. Not only have you seen this generation is the biggest generation that was raised by all all women i believe really yeah it was it's insane because most teachers which are women ours and the one before probably before or the a one little bit us? before no with us including us so millennials are like william's age we're gen z and then the there's another generation below us gen x now. i think yeah gen x gen yes. x is like my dad oh Okay, well, whatever. Anyways, but ours is for sure. It's ma- by mainly women. I think it was like 70%. Uh, so the they new generation more... is Generation Alpha. Okay, Alpha, yeah. So we, m- so many f- um, families are like single moms nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's It's insanely like crazy statistics. And they go to school. Most of the teachers, I think 75 to 80% of the teachers are women. So they're at home, they're taught by a woman. In school, they're taught by a woman. Um, they are not taught any masculine traits. That's, Which, in that case, if there's a bunch of single moms, that's on the guys, you know? It, that's like it is, up. but not always. Yeah. It's, it's just a messed up of everything. It, it's like there's fa- there's no families. You, know, you see, it's like all together, everything's messed up. Yeah. It's like if there were families and they were like together, that's that that would be different. But it's like women are alone, guys are alone, 
and it's like a whole mess and so and i i don't even have to bring up the statistics of single mom like everyone knows it everybody knows it if if you're raised in the single like parenthood uh it the chances of you you know rebelling or doing something like or even ending up in jail it's it's a lot higher than it is mm-hmm. if you're if you had both parents it's, it's definitely more difficult for the parent because like they're gonna have to work to support the family and then no one's watching the kids at home and it's not likely that the parent is able to like provide some sort of daycare or anything because usually single parents don't have the financial stability for that so they're gonna have to like leave the kids at home alone and they're gonna fall into like trouble and stuff like that so it's more difficult that yeah way. Or, or they're like in school and again mm-hmm. it's just school like do you really learn anything good in school no i'm not talking so about like, the school thing but i mean like you learn education you learn books education but you learn, like, other life. than that other than that at school what else did you learn like everything else in school that i've learned other than educational stuff is not very good to be honest like Like, they don't they don't raise you at school they might teach you like the basic stuff like respect and somewhat responsibility with like turning in your homework or whatever but they don't teach you how to live in the world like that comes from your parents and from experiencing things yeah and it's definitely more difficult that way with only one parent but back to the traditionalism thing. Honestly, I think that would help the current state of the world. If there's like more traditionalism, that would help the problems with like single parents and everything like that. I feel like that would like bring the world back to like the family type of lifestyle, you know? Yeah, because like when I, when people look at me or even us, because we're Eastern European, you know, they they talk about oh you guys are sexist because you know you guys um don't want your wives to work not necessarily don't why oh don't want but like it's a it's an option for them not to work mm-hmm. and it's kind of like sees like if if your woman is working it's kind of like seen as like are you not able to provide you know like like, like what what are you doing wrong yeah. that's so so you kind of get this like thing where people from the outside are calling you a little like sexist which is like i don't understand but well yeah. by all means like if the woman's making the money and has a better job like go ahead you can work you know but i feel like at that in that case a man should stay at home and then and watch over the kids yeah or like make a schedule that's at all times there's a parent at home so like the kids aren't alone like or try to do that as best as possible like, i know like certain financial situations don't allow for that and like parents both have to work a lot but if you're able to like try to always have a parent at home because i feel like that's important you know and yeah but yeah and it's important that both of the parents have like enough face time and like a relationship with the kids because if you only have one relationship with the kids like a parent wise it's almost the same thing but then there's also like not hatred but it's more like like when a child starts to look at the other parent as like like only as disciplinary you know mm-hmm. and they that's look at it as of, disciplinary yeah yeah and that's kind of like that. messes with the brain and, and like there's no relationship there it's only disciplinary relationship and then like hatred starts to follow and it's like and that's kind of like slavic mess. families yeah, are like that that, that is like because usually yeah. the dad is the one that disciplines you and he's the one that's always at work comes home like make sure you're on they're doing good or whatever and then yeah back to work and you barely see them and it's only just like discipline and that's it yeah but okay so i have another question for you so you know how tate we're using a lot of tate's analogies because that's where a lot of things are heard from right now but anyway tate said uh that it's important for a boy to um receive as little attention from their dad as possible and just be like raised by their mom like the dad just gives them the the main lessons of life like shows up says a couple things and then like make sure they're disciplined and then that's it and it's like 
very little attention or interactions like how do you how do you view that do you think that's right i think the reason why he says it is because it made him a stronger man i guess it made him and i think that's what he experienced in life he experienced that that, that's why that's why he says it but the thing is when, when i look at that not everybody is as strong as tate let's say mentally uh, like mm-hmm. you know mentally not every and they don't have a brother to you know help him out as well because they're together you know when you have two brains thinking it's like it's like they kind of bounce off each other and you're like uh you kind of make decisions like that but if it's one guy let's say and he he's not as strong as tate like mentally he can't make the right decisions you know I think that it's not necessarily correct what he says. I think yeah. maybe not fully correct what he says. Maybe it's not like the dad shouldn't be there like all the time and always with you, you know, playing with you. But there should be a balance. You know, you should, right? you know, you should see your dad, you should have a relationship with your dad. But, you know, there's like also time where you're supposed to make your own decisions as well. And, you know, be your yeah. own man, I guess. I definitely feel like the mother's role is more giving attention and kind of like nurturing or raising the child. But then the father kind of like instills the life values and stuff. Actually in, in our, um, in our sort of like Eastern European, like way of life is that the father teaches the son and the mother teaches the daughter. You think so? Yeah, because think that? always in Eastern European, Eastern Europe, whoever the dad was, the son is gonna be as well, as a career wise. Oh, okay, I see. You see, because yeah, if if the dad was a cop, his son is gonna be a cop. He follows in his footsteps. He kind of like teaches him the way of how he lives. So that's how it always was in Soviet Union. Even before that, it doesn't matter. It was always like that. My camera just went, okay, came back. My camera glitched. <laughs> I don't know why. But anyways, yeah, that's that's just how it was always. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and the reason why I was saying um, like they were calling like they call us sexist is that is that I don't understand why they don't fully understand something and then they call us out on it like they call us out without understanding like our backstory and our backstory culture. not only culture plus the complete visuals like they don't get to see everything they just see that oh, a woman can't work that, that let's say let's say i say my woman can't work right let's say i say it oh they don't understand why you're saying it yeah they don't understand it. why okay. i'm saying it and they don't understand that i'm not saying it like that she can't work i mean it as in like i don't want her to work because i want to provide everything yeah mm-hmm. like she can she can go work that's like i'm not gonna stop her but if I could provide anything, why would she need to go work? You know? Yeah. And uh, hold up. Also, to get back to when we were talking about, like, Andrew Tate, like, how he experienced, like, the, not necessarily cruelty, but, like... His father, how he was raised. Yeah, like, how he was, like, so hard on him. So there's this saying, um, hard times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men, and then the weak men create hard times. Yep. So that's pretty much what he probably was like trying to say with that is when your father is like hard on you and you experience like difficulties and trials in life, then you like are able to overcome it. And when you experience those again, you're able to like kind of go with the flow and yeah you know what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically him being in a hard time created him into a strong strong yeah, man a strong man and they even you... say that for their children they're gonna do the same thing like they're not gonna give their like if they have sons they're not gonna do like give them an easy life and stuff yeah like that. i actually heard that the the daughters are gonna get everything they want mm-hmm but the sons are are just gonna get uh what's it called like a hard life yeah like, it makes sense you know a little bit but also how are you supposed to teach them if 
if they're always going to see you as somebody that um, that doesn't like provide or doesn't doesn't even the son yeah their son is like I'm sure gonna they hate should understand them. that no as a kid you don't understand it as a child okay maybe as like a child but then even 12 up, years old do you think like let's say our cousins the 12 year old eric's brother uh, brothers do you think they'd uh, understand no okay no they wouldn't you don't understand until maybe like 16 or 17 but like and they still wouldn't point. understand they would have hatred maybe it depends it depends how they how they them, are you know? yeah who yeah. knows because how andrew tate he says oh this is the best way that could have happened if it was somebody else or somebody that didn't turn out that way he would have just had a hatred for their father and it would have just been like uh like oh he didn't show me any attention he was really rough to me why should i like him you know why should yeah, I? yeah but at that point just on the kid you know if that's how it is on the kid perceive life if they want it to be like kid. have that victim mentality then it's whatever because you always have to look at the positives like why would usually no parents want bad for the kids and they're trying but, to do anything good but so, but most of the time just because they don't want bad for the kid doesn't mean that they don't make like bad decisions you know right but you know, there's bad decisions you have to, that made. as the kid you have to look at it saying at the end of the day like there's some positives out of this and they did it for a positive reason not to hurt me you know yeah emotions should men but have them a man a man i think because that's depends. another top there's anger of- you're always gonna have like there's like these basic emotions that that need to drive you i guess you know, emotions drive you. Like the, mm-hmm. it, it is what it is. You you're, you're going to have emotions either way. But you got to like know how to use them, I guess. Right. And you need and, to be in control of them. So, okay, anger and motivation whatever. Those are uh, emotions. That's not exactly what I was going for. I meant being like open or like you know, like being vulnerable. Those type of emotions whenever men don't have those or like don't share them to women they say like oh like quit being so like you're being a toxic masculine person like do you think men should show those type of emotions no 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 no, how come because it's it's been like known that once there's there's many like situations and i saw this online too where um guys say that oh I i cried one time to my like let's say significant other and she no longer respects him and they Mm -hmm. they break up and and, like it's just there's so many situations where that happens the moment that they show any sort of like weakness and okay there's probably levels to that like if you're in a long relationship and like are comfortable with each other that's most likely not going to happen but if it's like but still less than a year like dating okay you might lose I don't. She no, okay. will lose like a, some sort of respect a little bit. It depends. It depends for what. At the end of the day, if it's something petty, then yeah, she'll lose respect. But if it's like something that's actually like a tra- traumatic thing that happened in your life, then at that point, she won't. You know. You. I. Like the thing is, we about. have no idea. We have no clue what we're talking about. So. I have no idea about women. Yeah, I guess we've never experienced that. We've never experienced that. <laughs> we have no idea. So yeah. you can't even think logically with uh, a woman, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not woman, with emotions. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> with emotions. Oh, same thing, right? <laughs> woman equals emotion? No, I'm just messing. Um, yeah, so so you can't like think logically about emotions. They, they work in weird ways. And, yeah. And a woman... They work in weird ways too. So, <laughs> so you you never know. You never know. Like, you know, let's say some random guy cries one time. He loses his wife of twenty years. You know, do you want to <laughs> take the risk? <laughs> <laughs> twenty years. Dude, all dream. reality, people don't care about your emotions. Facts. Like, as a man, like who's gonna as when you're hanging out with your boys and you're like complaining about something or crying. They're not going to care. Like, exactly. your boys won't care. And then, most likely, women like to say, like, oh, yeah, like, share your emotions. Like, be vulnerable to us. But they also don't care. 
Yeah. Like that's that's the reality. It's it's sad, but yeah, nobody that's cares why, yeah. about you. Nobody cares about you. Be your own person. Uh, you gotta put that in your head brain. to make you strong. Yeah, make make <laughs> your make it get a thick skull so that nothing can get through. Get a thick heart mm-hmm. so nothing can get through, and you just live Preach, life, brother. You just live life, I guess. After that, well, the hard times create strong men. <laughs> make hard times for yourself. Yeah, be like Thoma. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! I'm called for. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm called for. I'm called okay. for. But, hey, they're going away though. Hard times for her slowly going away. You think so? Let's not talk on that. Yeah. Anyways, um, let's go into feminism. I'm gonna give a little backstory. So the history of feminism is a good thing, and it was for a good cause and everything. So pretty much there was like different levels or time periods for feminism but the one that's most popular or began like modern feminism began in the 1960s where the women's lib liberation movement was fighting for equal pay equal rights and laws so being able to vote and having like the same um weight in their right. vote yeah. yeah yeah and also like being able to have equal education being able to go to college go into the military and just be like equal to men and they obviously got that right yeah at this point like, do you agree yeah they, they definitely reached their goal yeah. so like women are all able to go to college the same as men and they actually go a lot more than yeah men i think there's a higher point. percentage of women that go to it's it's college. insanely higher now they're able to go to the military Obviously, men are still... That's a more popular choice for men, but they're able to do that. Um, They have the same rights in um, voting and also in politics. Like, there might still be a higher percentage of men in politics, but they have the same ability to get in, just depending on if people want to vote for them or not. That's up to the society. And then same pay. They definitely do. So men get paid more than women on average. However, for the same job, they're gonna get paid the same amount, but just for the same women, time worked as well. Like, like yeah, for the same time. Just women go for less dangerous jobs and less. Uh, what is it called? Less less labor income. intensive. Yeah, labor. Not even that. Like, there's less income for the jobs they go into. Yeah, compared to men. Yeah, as soon like as the you engineering said, field. As as soon as you said, uh, women go into uh, less paying jobs. <laughs> there was this meme. Um, uh-huh. That came up. Woman, uh, woman doctors, female, female, <laughs> female engineers, female nurses. Yeah, like that's their choice. Like, why did they go into female <laughs> careers? You know. Yeah, I mean, like, you not for paid. real. Like, yeah. teachers, nurses, they get paid less than engineers, coal yeah. miners, and stuff like that. Like all or steel workers, like they get paid more. So yeah, it's because they're very labor it intensive. It's like yeah. a trade of trade of labor to money it's it's a lot of work that's why women women aren't gonna do it because it's like when they go into college they study stuff that makes their life i guess easier but doesn't very pay well that's why gender studies is a very big like like what's it called career choice right now that's Mm -hmm. getting chosen is because like you don't do much as in the career, so it's not like a labor intensive work, and they get paid a little more, I think. But there's just not enough jobs for for that yeah. career. Pretty so. much labor intensive jobs generally get paid more. And there's a lot more labor intensive yeah. jobs. Like yeah. the jobs that they're choosing, there's not enough jobs. They're paid less. And it's just it's just bad decisions, I guess. Mm. and okay just before we get into any of these like main topics that are coming up this just to clarify this is just the like radical feminists like the very um extreme ones it's not like the general feminist this is yeah we are not against women yeah having right to vote i'm totally for women (laughs) having the right to vote (laughs) so out of pocket right there (laughs) no one was saying anything about voting (laughs) (laughs) You know what? You could have your right to vote. vote. Yeah. 
<laughs> Even if nobody asked. <laughs> All right. So okay. let's get into this. So you would expect once equality was reached, there would be happiness and peace, right? Like yeah. women would be satisfied with everything. But no, that is not the case. Um, what are you doing, Victoria? My sister thinks it's not true. Come in here. Tell me your thoughts. Are you a feminist? Me? Yeah. I'm for being a stay-at-home mom. You want to be a stay-at-home mom? Yeah. See? I, we were I discussing this before. My very own sister. Okay, she might have been raised in the same type of culture as me, but still. She would rather stay at home, raise children, rather than to go to a job and work full-time. Like, what else do you guys want? <laughs> we solved it. We solve sexism. <laughs> we need to undo what America has done. And how do you do that? Let the women stay at home. You hear that? <laughs> Let the women stay at home. <laughs> All right, now you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> what anyway. are we discussing here? Yeah. The current movement is aiming for uh, women to have more power than men. Yeah. Like, they don't want to stop. They want to just keep on going, and they're trying pretty much any type of way to get, like, more power and, like, stomp on men trying to get them to have less. And this is just the radical feminism, just to clarify again. <laughs> but, um... The thing is, it's it's so hard to divide them that it's kind of, like... They like all group they're kind of, like, group into one because they... they Which is also they're, they're also feminism. They, they all call themselves feminists. But it's it's not fair. Like like I know there's like like women that don't want my head, you know, on the spike. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want my head on the spike. But you know it's hard to distinguish. You know who who wants my head chopped? You know, kill all men movement. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's definitely kind of whack. Why did, wait? Why did that even happen? Like how did how did that go through? And, like, th those weren't getting flagged, those videos? They weren't at all. Like, that's they messed were, up. Yeah. Like, imagine, it, like, yeah. switch the roles. Like, that would right away be a problem, you know? It, it, yeah. They were even testing it. So, they put the hashtags of kill all women. And they also mm -hmm. did a hashtag kill all men. And the kill all woman was flagged and it was, like, taken down. Like, you, there's no such thing. And the kill all men was, mm -hmm. like, they took down the stuff. For kill all women, but they didn't take I just, kill all men. Uh, like I don't understand what's the point of doing that. Like that's causing more of a separation and more of a problem. Yeah. And like in that case, that's literally going against their um their whole entire thing of being Equality. equal. Yeah. yeah. And like at that day, at the end of the day, like aren't you contradicting your own beliefs? It is, it's funny because even in media and when those people um, notice any sorts of whenever men are put equal or like threaten their shoot. Okay, let me <laughs> re-elaborate here. I'm lost in my lost in the sauce, but so, you can go. I was going to say uh, that I think that they're just being fed information that is wrong uh and they're being said that oh women make less money you know because you know you could spoon feed bad information like if you really want to you could create any sort of information that you want right and spoon feed it to people that don't really you know research or don't really you know put the time to think about it or or go through the information and you spoon feed bad information to reach a goal and their goal is to become superior. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's crazy because um, the current movement like considers anything that places men equal to them as an attack. And even in media, when you see that, like some sort of like a person that's like saying a speech, or even like people that are like Tate. They get flagged and um, they're like known as being controversial, which is crazy just because they're trying to be 
Not this okay. Maybe Tate's a bad example. He's not trying yeah. to be equal, but is like, he? No, Tate is just he's just a trying to be like topic. a dom. I, I think yeah. it's it's not even a topic that we should be talking about on yeah. this specific topic. Like, because <laughs> well, we, we talked about him at the no no at the beginning uh, it was fine because that was the topic oh he's the we toxic masculinity yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what we were talking about like part of it like so but at the end like right now when we're talking about feminism I just don't think he's a good topic to bring up. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. That's so, I, anyways, but it's okay. Uh, you could bring up any sort of you know person when they try to say that we're equal online, they see that as that as a tech. Mm-hmm. They want to have a margin of comfortability, but in that very essence, it's contradicting their own movement. <laughs> I wrote that down in the notes, and when I did it, I thought I was such a genius, you know. <laughs> There's so many big words. I was, I was surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Anyways, uh, do you think that feminists like traditionalism? No. You don't think so? No. I think that... Uh, I think their whole point is to take it down, I think. See, I don't believe that. You don't believe that? Mm-mm. So whenever equality or traditionalism is in their favor they're for it you know so they're like how my sisters went in here said like yeah like i rather i rather stay at home and be like a stay-at-home mom because obviously no one wants to go to work right but then she's not gonna listen to what he says yeah well not necessarily her but like those type of people yeah (laughs) like she likes a man a man being the breadwinner bringing all the home like all the money home being a hard worker but then whenever he like asks her to do something like maybe clean at home or like don't go out with these this group of friends right away he's being a toxic man and he's the world is sexist and stuff like that and like kill all men yeah. like that's the type of stuff that starts happening and that's obviously not a lot like most women aren't like that but there's a s- small so? percentage I don't think so, but like, there's a small percentage that's being portrayed in media, like, drastically. Like, a lot of people see that, and that's creating a huge hatred from men to women. Like, there's also a movement starting to happen with that, like, where men yeah. have something against women. Actually, I've in our seen generation. that that uh, the last generation, I think, it was the millennials. It mm-hmm. was insane heights where. Men are not marrying women. Getting with not women, not necessarily. No, no, oh, not man. even marrying. Like, like marrying. They're. It's the Just least being, marriages ever. Being by themselves, independent. Yeah, being by being independent, they don't take any woman on, and it's like they're choosing to stay alone. Yeah. It's great, and it's it's like supposed to be way more now. Like. Yeah, that's generation. definitely a problem, cause. Yeah, cause if men have just. Less just population yeah they just like they just decide not like i don't want to mess with this like i don't want to go with the wife that's you know that sleeping around and doesn't listen yeah. to me yeah not necessarily doesn't listen to me she just d- disrespects me uh-huh disrespects me and does it in my face you know it's like why would it's you hard to find about yourself it's hard to find like someone that's kind of fits your um checks all your boxes you know right now yeah it is very hard especially since we're christian and we want to find someone that's christian as well it's definitely hard to find someone like that but you see the thing is i think i think that if you're looking in the christian society it's you're gonna find it a lot more right yeah but that just leaves like the rest of the world kind of screwed because because uh, most of the like the the good people are sort of like focused in churches and because you're not gonna find you know good people at the bar like they, they're good people it's just and they're not like fitting your boxes you know mm-hmm. so they're good people they're just not fitting my boxes as a good person to, mm-hmm. marry, I, yeah. to marry to marry sorry so yeah so like the places where you think you'd find them is the church. And that's the only place that like I could imagine, like where else could you find somebody good? Like 
I guess a school, but the chances of you meeting someone that's Christian and has all the traits at a school, it's kind of like iffy, iffy, you know? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, no sure. Let's go. Okay. So this one, this one's a little, well, touchy. This or not? I don't know. It's like it's a weird conversation, but um, there's obviously been a massive movement, and like with sexual assault and abuse, mm-hmm. that's obviously a good thing that women are able to speak out if they're that's actually happening to them, but recently there's been like there's a lot of controversy of like women throwing men under the bus just to if they're mad at them and just saying like oh he sexually abused me and ruining that person's career you know because yeah, life with that career, not only life yeah life because even if it's not true and um it like it comes out publicly that the woman lied that per- that man's career is still like ruined and their life is ruined because brands will drop them because they don't want to ha- be associated with that type of connotation, you know? Okay. Like that's negative and they don't want that. So they say like, sorry, we can't. That's only people that we're talking about that have like YouTube channels, stuff like that. Yeah, like the brands, Hollywood brand. and stuff like that. Yeah, but jobs, they'll throw you out. Like if yeah, there's even any sort of, yeah. Micron and like businesses they have a name for themselves and they don't want to be incorporated with that. Cause if that gets out in the media that this man who's been accused of something is still working for this company, they're going to get their company to lose stock like value or like maybe lose workers and stuff. So they're not going to risk that. And what's yeah. one person to them? Like they can find the replacement easily. Yeah. So they'll just throw him out and put like a flag on his name or resume or whatever. So it's definitely messed up. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily ties in with feminism or like the toxic femininity, but does it? Like, do you think that's part of their movement? Is to like throw it, men I under think the it's bus like par- that? It's part of the feminist movement, but throwing people under the extreme. bus extreme is the toxic feminism. Yeah. Throwing people under the bus when they didn't do anything wrong is definitely extreme. Like, it's just wrong. I think most most people will agree that that's wrong. Yeah. But. Uh, Innocent until proven guilty. That's how it's supposed to be. But and it's that's how not it's like not. that anymore. Yeah. That's. Change. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but definitely a bad thing actually. It is a bad thing, because yeah. no matter what, like, like we don't know any information that's going on in Tate's thing, but it, there is no... It's ruining there was his no name proof. right now. It's ruining his thinks, name, yeah. Everyone thinks that he's actually doing that, or like a large percentage. Of we're not even talking about that he's right. We're just saying that just looking by what's going on right now, which they didn't even convict him, like, he's not in jail yet, like, in prison. I they thought he's 30-day... Well, they they took him on a watch to try to get oh, information, okay. you know. So he hasn't been convicted of a charge. So, like, it's innocent until proven guilty. But he's already getting slaughtered in the media. Like everything is already against him. He's his whole face is like his name is is like done for, mm-hmm. right? Just by looking at what's going on. If he gets charged, you know, that's you know, I guess it's right that he's getting slaughtered in the media. If if it's true if mm-hmm. it's not true then it's messed up so and there's nothing you can do about there's it there's nothing you point. can do about it because that's just how yeah. the world works nowadays cancel culture all of that because those companies are getting money off of them spreading like the news like them saying like oh look at this guy he's a i don't know what are they saying he's a trafficker human trafficker yeah sex trafficker. yeah sex trafficker so they get money off of saying that so why would like you know they're just making money off of it yeah um i don't know honestly i think that's good for this conversation do a little conclusion type of thing the conclusion is don't be toxic (laughs) be a good person yeah be a good person be a good person we think that men and women 
should have equal opportunities, opinions on like any topic. Like, yeah, men, women men should have equal. the same opportunity of being coal miners, I think. Women should have the same opportunity. <laughs> All right, hold on. <laughs> that what they do. They do have the same opportunities, eh? obviously. Exactly. They have the same but opportunity. Yeah. Obviously, we can't experience like true equality, like everything to be equal opportunities and stuff because based on gender, like women go through their own difficulties, men go through their own experiences yeah. and trials and stuff. So life can't be fair. Like you have to go through your own stuff and eventually you can make it where you want to be. And women are, the thing is women are able to get the same positions as men. So that's yeah. like, that's the good thing. And that's how it should be. But, um, obviously yeah, with our differences in hormones, DNA, and just like years of social construct, uh, certain things can't be changed. And like having men, men's type of roles and women's roles is kind of the type of like lifestyle that's we're going to live in you know it's hard to break away from that since it's been like hammered in our dna for so many generations and like our social construct is literally having men have certain roles in women like that's how it is and to yeah. break away from that it's going to take a lot of time and effort and i don't I, know if that's necessarily think, a good thing i, I don't think it's it's possible just just by dna and genetics that just what do you how, mean so it's women are going to choose jobs that are less demanding on the body because uh they're not the size that we are like women don't grow to the same size that we are so we choose jobs we could could choose jobs that are more demanding bodily wise so like strength wise and stuff like that men can choose those jobs and women um, won't choose those jobs because it's just too much stress on the body for the pay. Mm -hmm. So it just, I just don't see it happening. Yeah. But sure. Is that done? At least we day? have the same opportunity. So we have the same opportunity. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Conversation done. <laughs> done. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. You're going to end it off? Yep. Thanks for watching. Listening. Have a good, thanks for listening. Watching. Oh, don't. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Whoa. Share with everyone else. Also, don't be mad at us if we said anything that hurts your feelings. We don't mean it that way. We're just trying to have a good conversation. And women are equal to men. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>